Hi, everybody. I'm Phil Trifoletti, former mayor of the village of Mamaroneck. I'm here tonight with George Mercadishian and Maria DeRose. And we're here, uh, and they're here as candidates for mayor in the village of Mamaroneck and trustee. And they've been very busy over the last month, month and a half, campaigning all over the place. And uh, George, why don't you start by telling us what you're hearing and what, what you're seeing out there? Well, Phil, we've been walking, Marie and I, um, for the last month and more over a month already since uh, right after Labor Day and door to door. Great. We haven't missed a house. We have been going down side streets, dead end streets, you name the street. <laughs> up and downstairs. <laughs> up and downstairs. I mean, this village has is, is got more hills than I've ever seen. And uh, I have to be honest with you, it's, it's been a, a true challenge. But the most invigorating part of the uh, campaign has been meeting all the people out there. Great. And talking to them, having conversation, and uh, telling <clears throat> us exactly what's going on and what, how they feel about, you know, uh, what's happening in our village. Yep. And, you know, Marie could chime in, of course, mm -hmm. and she knows equally as well what's been happening. And I got to tell you, I, it's, it's overwhelming. Good. Um, they feel the same way we do on, on our, poli on our uh, policies and what, we, what we're going to bring to this village. And uh, they've been very supportive. Terrific. How about Marie? I what mean, I've lived here my entire life. And just by walking, I've discovered streets I never even knew existed. Yeah, I, know. I mean, you, you know, you grow up someplace thinking you know everything. But it has been, it's been a great experience. We have met so many people, you know, and they are happy to sit with us and talk with us about the issues, about what's important to them. Yep. And that's really, you know, the heart and soul of our village. We don't Absolutely. know what is going on with more than one individual at a time. So it's good that people let us know yep. and, you know, make these issues come to light. Yeah, good. We've been getting some, we've actually been getting some emails through our website and uh, it's interesting, people are still contacting us and saying, sorry, we did miss you. Right. And we've been leaving these door knockers at people's homes. And uh, it's, it's pretty you know, clear that people are interested, that they're still asking questions even up until today. Um, I had a, um, a resident in my neighborhood that has asked for you know, some clarity on a specific issue. And uh, you know, I'm certainly waiting for them to get back to me. But uh, I told them that you know, I'm readily available to speak with them. And so is Marie. So we, we really you know, ready to move forward, uh, you know, with the task that uh, hopefully the village will will put into us. And we're not done yet. I think we have about 10 more streets we need to cover between now and November 7th. So, so you, you, we're still you've going. You've through the whole village? The entire village, The entire Phil. village. That's a, a mighty task. E even, the mis <laughs> even the areas that are mixed use, uh, it didn't matter. Yeah. Uh, some streets had one house on it. We still went down that street. Yep. That's fantastic. So, uh, and we've been averaging, what, almost four miles a day? Pretty much. Good. So it's been it's good. been quite a Get challenge. In good shape. But <laughs> listen, I, I, I have to tell you, the best part again is meeting the residents. Yep. I, I don't think I would have ever met as many people as I have. I remember when I used to uh, when I was doing the walking and. Uh, uh, we'd be, be going up and down streets and stuff like that, and you really get tired. I mean, face it, I, I, I used Without to be exhausted. Doubt, sure. But then you'd see your sign parked out on a uh, person's lawn, and it would give you put a spring in your step because you know that person is supporting you, and you go into that house to talk to the people. Yeah, we whatever. see it. We see it every every day that we're walking. Yeah. Our signs are out there, and we're very proud of all the signs that we've been able to put up. Uh, we're close to 300. We're almost out. Oh, wow, um, and uh, we think that uh, you know that the people are are responding to you know our door to door that uh, you know they're appreciative that we're doing this we're taking the effort yeah. and uh, you know we're committed to the task Marie and I have said that from day one we're going to commit to this whatever it takes whatever the results may be yeah. uh, we know we did as much as we could do I know uh, I uh, I was going down Fenimore Road the other day and uh, as I made the turn I guess from Waverly onto Fenimore. Um, so this gigantic sign, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and it, it's the four Democratic candidates, and I say, well, that is an impressive sign, let me tell you, and they're all really nice people, but as I was going, drawing closer to it, driving closer to it, I said to myself, wow, I says, they've all been there since the 90s, in one way or another, either at elective office or working behind the scenes for the Democratic Party, and uh, we're still dealing with the same type of issues from the 90s to today. And uh, I, I said to myself, you know, I'm glad George and Maria are running because we really need some new blood, some fresh ideas, some uh, uh, different ways of doing things and different ways of approaching issues and problems. Um, and I think both of you guys have the ability to really uh, make the village move forward in a really good way. Well, Phil, when you make that turn on Fenimore Road, yeah. you'll see 
two of our billboards going yeah. both ways on Hoyt Avenue. That's good. Um, so, uh, you know, as you see that one, uh, that one, as you turn the corner, ours is right there, as well as coming back the other direction. Yep. And um, it's really nice to see, you know, to see our signs up, to see these pictures and yep. people commenting on Facebook and social media. Um, so it's been really good for us. I mean, Fantastic. I know it yeah. feels... Exactly. And if you notice, it's the two of us. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know. You know, we're, we're doing this with the support of the residents. Yeah, I know. The people that make up the village of Amaranek. We're not doing this with, you know, any political clout behind us. We are for the people, and the people hopefully and, will come out for us. And that's important because when you get elected, you owe it to yourselves and the public to do things for them, not a political party. Absolutely. Like your opponents are tied in, all of them are tied into a political party. That's not to say that they won't do things on their own and think for themselves, but they're going to also be beholden to their party and to go down the road their party wants to go down. I think, I think had, had we had five uh, Democrats on the current board, we would have had multiple sure. muter space, parking spaces on the avenue. Oh, Thank God absolutely. Norman uh, Lou were there. And uh, the, you know, that's why I think it's very important that you guys get elected is because that way we won't have a 5-0 Democratic board, which could be not good for the village. Well, Maria is a lot more familiar with yeah. parking than, than I am, although I know the absolutely. topic, but I'd like her to, yeah. clar you know, Oh, yeah, clarity absolutely. To those those multi-space parking meters, Phil, like you said, would have been, a you disaster. know. Well, I won't say all of Maranick Avenue because that's not the purpose of a multi-space meter. They would have right. been on select parts of Maranick yeah, Avenue, still. which would have been a disaster for yeah. the village, you yeah. know. Um, elderly, handicapped, people with small children, people want convenience. Yeah. And as chairperson of the parking committee, that was the one resounding statement that I received and I did I walked through every store in the village myself and another committee member spoke to residents sent out a survey that was what everyone wanted make parking as easy as I possible know. I know and that's what you know the committee was then committed to do and you know as you know with our motion our recommendation to go ahead with single space meters yep. that's what it will be when yep. those are coming I don't know. Um, <laughs> and the majority well, seems to be holding that up. But well, didn't your board just spend close to $50,000 to upgrade? $47,000 to yeah. upgrade the existing multi and, and what was that all about? Meters. Um, in their zeal yeah. to get this idea implemented, they um, went with what they could afford. They didn't do their due diligence. They mm -hmm. didn't really research into anything. They knew they wanted multi-space meters, and they bought them. Well, you know, when you do that and then you finally get them out and they're operational and you find out they're a disaster, what do you do? Do A, you admit you're wrong, or mm -hmm. B, you continue throwing good money after bad? So That's here we are. Uh, basically, the meters were bought from one company. They found out they weren't good, so what they're doing with this $47,000 now is taking out the guts of those meters and replacing them with the guts from a different company. <laughs> to make them more user friendly. So we're headed down the road to disaster. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that, George? Well, I, I tell you, Phil, you know, these are topics that have been going on for 20 years, as you said. Um, we're still talking about parking, we're still talking about taxes, we're still talking about zoning and planning. Yep, yep. We need to finally come. Uh, to terms with those items and move on, move forward. Yep. Let's let's bring in some of the new items that need to be addressed. We have infrastructure issues here. Um, we have building issues here uh, that have been going on for you know for, for quite some time that we can't even get a handle on. We've had six different building inspectors, maybe even more, um, in the last eight years. I mean, how much turnover are we going to have in this community? We can't hang on to one. Um, a top municipal employee, yep. um, y you know, in the last eight years, we, we've, we seriously have an issue. Yeah. So it's something that we certainly have to look at. Um, that zoning is, is really uh, has issues. Uh, definitions need to be defined. Well, you, you were part of the zoning board at one point in time. I was on a board for 10 years. Right. And you also have a, a, a background in, in building and, and engineering and stuff like that. You know, putting, you, you, you build out space, right? Correct. So I think with your background, when we have a project, I, absolutely, Phil. I, I do. You'll I know do, what to do. I do municipal work. Um, I've done a lot of projects. You know, even similar to um, municipal projects equal to the Jefferson Avenue Bridge. Had I at least, well, <laughs> <laughs> we need a toll booth. Hopefully not. We need a toll booth to pay for the Jefferson <laughs> Avenue Bridge. We do. We, unfortunately, we do, and that's and that's pretty sad because you know we we have people in this village that are capable of doing just that. 
uh, helping out and assisting at no charge. Yep. They're welcome. They, they, you know, they, they want to help out this village. They want to do the right thing. And uh, sometimes they're held back and they don't have that opportunity. I think that Marie and I will bring a whole different, fresh perspective to the board by saying, let's get more people involved. We have the knowledge of people in this community. Let's utilize our volunteers. Our volunteers have been and always have been the best component of this village, which makes this village so diverse. Yeah. Um, it's given us great, you know, you know, great things over the years. Yeah. Our volunteers, our, our fire department, our police department, which is terrific. Not yeah. so much to be volunteers. Used to be but, auxiliary. But but uh, there was an auxiliary at one time, yep. and and you know for that matter our TPW workers. Let's get the people to do what they need to do, and yep. and let's as government officials stay out of that business. Uh, we can make the day to day decisions or help you know approve uh, projects and so on. But there are people who are more qualified than than village officials to take it into their own hands. Well, I think without the volunteers, the village doesn't work. It You've got to have the volunteers. Both of you guys have volunteered on many committees. Exactly. And, and you've contributed mightily to the village moving forward. That's so why I think you're going to make great candidates, and you are great candidates, you're going to make a great mayor and trustee. Phil, we, but, um, we, we look at it as, Marie and I look at it as, you know what, everybody becomes our family at, at the end of this election. When yeah. we're elected, it's not who just supported us, it's everybody. The village becomes right. one for us, and, and we will look at everybody <clears throat> equally, not because... Uh, where one 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 party or another, you know, as Maria said, we've done this all by ourselves. Yeah, uh, we are pretty much the lone rangers, um, you know, in this campaign, and uh, we've done our own fundraising. We've 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 put up our own website. Um, we have You've our own great. emails uh, email addresses. Uh, with just a couple of helping hands who are not even party related, yeah. are willing because they believe in us. Yeah. and uh, you know, we're proud of that. And no matter what happens, I think Marie and I could walk away and say, you know what, we've done as, be as best as we could. Exactly. So this election is between you and the, and the village residents. You don't owe anything to anybody. You're going to be working for them. And exactly. We're not beholden to anybody. Exactly. Hey, let's talk about a couple things that, that are pretty important in the village. And uh, one is the zoning and the fact that we have a lot of building going on in the village. Um, a lot of big, beautiful buildings are going up, but we really got to be careful. So yeah, want, absolutely. Want to say something no. about that? I mean, for so long, it seems that our village government has been reactive instead of proactive. Yeah. We're not looking far enough into the future. And sometimes to look into the future, you have to look into the past. What is it that makes Mamaronek so great? What is it that makes Mamaronek so unique? Why do people want to live in our village? Well, because if you look at Mamaronek, Mamaronek is basically 6.7 square miles, mm -hmm. 3.2 of which is land. Inside those 3.2 mi miles, and Phil, you would know this because you've been here just a little yeah. bit longer than <laughs> yeah, me. A little bit. <laughs> what did we have? We had industry. We had mom and pop stores. Yep. We had starter homes. We had apartments. We had luxury homes. Absolutely. We had a movie theater. We had shopping, you know, grocery stores. We had, there was nothing you needed to go outside of the That's village right. for. Right. And now look at it. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's changed, you know, and change is good, but you have to keep it within the character of the village. Yeah, absolutely. And it, we're losing our diversity. We're losing who we are. We're losing what made Mamaronek the place people wanted to yeah, be. Yeah. People wanted to live in Mamaronek. This way they could have all of that. They could have parks for their kids. They could have water, you know, sports down at the harbor. They could go shopping. They could do anything they sure. needed to do right in their own village. Yeah, I know. And bonus, 45 minutes later, you're on a train, you're in, you know, you're in the heart of Manhattan, right from here. Yeah. You know, now we're turning into a community that basically all we're going to have going for us in the future is we'll be 45 minutes out of Manhattan. Yeah, because we'll be and filled we'll with... be a mini Manhattan. Yeah, and we, know. You know, that's not what people come here for. That's not what people want. I know. George, what do you think? Well, you know, Phil, our, our infrastructure um, is, is key component to all this. Our infrastructure, our overbuilding... You know, we keep building and building, but we've forgotten about our infrastructure. You can't build, do one without the other. They go hand in hand. And as, and as you're building in, in a planned development, and I, and I consider what's planned development, planned development is, is with building with thought, building with some concept with where does it go? What's the, what's the long-term impact? It's part of, it's, it actually falls into part of the comprehensive plan, I believe. Um, whereas, you know, once you start overbuilding, 
Now you've got to deal with your infrastructure. You've got sewer, you've got water, you've yep. got uh, sanitation, you've got fire to deal with, you've got police. You've got all the accessories that go with that, and nobody's taking that into consideration yep. to say that we're going to bring in a tax base. Well, in fairness, Phil, apartment buildings or larger buildings don't bring in the tax base that the average homeowner yeah, uh, you know you know pays on a on an annual basis right. so the amount of the amount of, of, of what you would pay out um, or have to pay out for sanitation police department additional police fire and so on it's, is going to be really uh, detrimental to this community and who's going to end up paying it ultimately it'll be the individual homeowner you know for me to get to Har from Harbor Heights sometimes down to the post road it could take me 15 minutes to do that drive yeah. Traffic People stuff. in Washingtonville to try to get out of their, their driveways to try to get through those streets. It could take them 15 minutes. There's 90 units and going up just there alone on Waverly right, Avenue. Which I, mean, I don't understand. Our, our, schools, <laughs> our, our schools are busting at the seams in yep. Bernick right. Avenue. Um, where, are all these, where are all these people going to go? We talk about diversity. That's great. I love the diversity. That's why I moved here. Yeah, that's right. And I've been here for 34 years. Um, still in the same home. So at the end of the day, when people start talking about what are we going to do with traffic? How are we going to mitigate it? I, you know what? There's got to be some form of a solution, but slowing down maybe our development to yep. a point where we could figure it out yep. and not just keep building and have to deal with it later on. And one of the things that scares me a little bit is the fact that, you know, they put together a really nice plan for the industrial area. A lot of what they want to do make, 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 right. makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. But what's going to happen to the people in Revere? And what's going to happen to people down in Washingtonville on, on Center, Madison, you know, all those streets? How are they going that's to get to their homes? That's my neighborhood. Yeah, <laughs> I, grew, I mean, I grew up on yeah, Grand so, Street. Um, what's going to happen there? I mean, I, I grew up on Grand Street. I lived there for the first 10 years of my life. And, yeah. I mean, the reason we moved is because, you know, we didn't have enough parking. Yeah. And that was 40 years ago. Yeah, I know. Um, now, uh, <laughs> you, you can't park yeah. a fly between two cars in Washingtonville. And the traffic is just, it's... It's awful, you know, the one-way streets, there's only basically, what, uh, Waverly that goes through, or Center that goes through, right onto to Maronica yeah. Avenue? Yeah, right. It's yep. one street. It's well, Waverly that goes all the way through. It goes all the way and through. And just, they're going to add, what, 90 units to 90, that area? 90, 90 units. units to that alone. Yeah. Um, the Maker Zone, I think, is a great concept. Yeah, I, I do, too. I think it, yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's great. I think it'll draw a, a lot of attention to the village, artisanal uh, shops, um, maybe a little bit of, of, of residential uh, above it, similar to New York City style. Um, I, I think it'll draw, but that's only a concept. At the end of the day, we have to figure out what to do with the traffic. That's the next component of this. So before that moves any further, we need to talk about traffic. And there are yep. many ways to mitigate that, in our opinion, and, right. and Marie and I talked well, about that. So what you're saying is you, we need to protect the residents in, in Washington. Absolutely. Bills, you know, Without that. Revere and, uh, and along uh, Halstead. It's uh, Palmer, rather. It, that's really important that those, because they're, they're going to be the, the feeder and the catchers of all the traffic that go in and out of that, that, that zone. Right. You Absolutely. need to have a balance. You can't fix one thing by breaking another. Absolutely. It's, yeah. It just doesn't work that yeah. way. And, uh, you know, it's great. Mamaronic is really popular. A lot of people want to come here and build. I think that's fantastic. Uh, but I think it, we really need to take a deep breath. And like you say, George and Maria, you got to start looking at uh, the, our zoning laws and do what's right now for the There are so many residents. definitions, Phil, yeah. in our zoning that are still um, blurry. Yep, yeah. oh, I know. Um, and they've just started working on that now yeah. where they're starting to redefine some of the language, which is great. It should have happened eight years, years ago, ago yeah. 10 years ago, yeah, I know. Um, 15 years. And, and, and it was. It was discussed by other building departments, uh, 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 building department heads, but nothing ever came, yeah. uh, you know, nothing ever came of it. So... Now it's really time to move that forward because this village is going to be so overbuilt. Yep. We're either going to start tearing down people's homes and building, you know, newer homes, um, or we're going to start horseshoeing, uh, I know. you know, uh, homes within. So I, I think we really have to take I, I, a hard I, look. at I don't want it to take me half hour to get to the post road from the Harbor Heights, but absolutely with not. The direction that we're going, that's going It'll to happen. It'll take 45 minutes yeah. if we start building yeah, all this. Exactly. I want to. We, we already got a 10 minute warning here, so I, I, I want <laughs> okay. to just move on to a couple of things. Taxes and way to control expenses. That's really important in, in our village. Um, mm -hmm. You know, all of us are getting tax increases every year. Um, and, uh, you know, we need to do something to try and slow it down or to s somehow get more income coming in here and not making it so that we can't walk the streets and travel through, the, you know, drive our cars because of congestion. 
So, George, what kind of ideas do you have here? Well, you know, Marie and I have looked at at the budget for a full year, yeah. and we've been. It's it's. It's pretty mind-boggling. I know. You really have to sit and, and get into it to, to really understand what's I happening. Know. And you've been through that process, I so you it. know it only too well. <laughs> but, but, yeah, exactly. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, what could we do? Well, the school tax is a fixed number yep. uh, for starters. Um, and, and so are salaries and pensions and so on. They're also fixed. But there are other ways we could streamline. For example, um, the, the village... Um, in controlling their spending has um, has not consolidated their um, their buying potential what, what does that mean what does it mean is that every department is buying from a different store or different lot we can consolidate it using an example small example is copy paper yeah. let's buy from one vendor let's say we're gonna buy you know 5,000 reams a year or whatever that number may be um, let's let's get a number. Let's yep. get a purchase order for it, and that's what we'll buy. Um, that will also stop residents from coming forward to board meetings saying, "Hey, did we do proper procurement or did we do proper, uh, you know, buying ability?" Um, so right. now at this point, now we have competitive uh, uh, buying because we're going out to bid yeah. for items. So that's one way we could shrink that down. We can look at. Cell phone bills, cable bills, Everything. consolidating. Right. I know exactly. you, you have a, a pet peeve at this. You really want to get into it. I really want to get into the bills. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> nothing, I mean, nothing bothers me more when anybody gets up and, you know, poses a question and you've got, you know, six or seven people on a day just looking at you like. Yeah, no. I know. Yeah, no. Like, you know, you're rolling three heads. Like, why are you even asking? Right. It, answer the questions. They're yeah. there. The, the answers are there. The numbers are there in black and white. When I'm elected, I'm going to make it my priority to sit down once a week with the village manager and with um, Augie the and the treasurer and sit down and go through the bills. Good. This way, if a question does come up, residents can be answered yep. and they'll know yep. and wh where your tax dollars are going. It's not my personal money. It's, not, it's everybody's money. It's our tax dollars. And you have a right to know exactly where it's going and why. Well, a commitment like that to go through the, the bills on a weekly or monthly basis, every one of them, not just flipping through, that, that's, uh, that'll take time, but you'll get a lot of benefit from it. Absolutely. I know, I know myself, I would love to see the clerk treasurer each board meeting um, take the top ten bills that he has and discuss them prior to the sure. board voting on the audit. Exactly. And then you could take other questions, but sure. that that's right w where you are uh, with trying to look at everything and make sure it all makes sense. I mean, we all do it at home. You know, oh, we yeah, through, We absolutely. go through our bills and we see, is this, <laughs> is this a valid charge? Is this an invalid? Did I actually do this? And we pay them. We, we, t we talk about how we could earn more income in, into this village. You know, our Harbor Island is under is underutilized right absolutely. now. Absolutely. Um, you know, look at this. Look at sport time. We've yep. got sport time in there. It's the jewel of Mamaroneck going forward. Yep. It's it's really the biggest piece. It brings in quite a bit of income. Yes, it does. Um, you know, initially it's I think it's close to um, uh, between two and three hundred thousand dollars right now currently mm -hmm. that it brings in, and and the village has been looking at options with sport time and potentially with other vendors. They're talking about actually bringing multi multi sport sport courts. Great. Uh, which will, and they've just done one actually in Eastchester. Sport Time has just done one there. They're overwhelmed with it. And I think that the village has the ability to do that as well. I think there's a proposal or there was discussion, and nothing, is, nothing has come out yet, but yep. to be put behind the treatment plant. Um, but there's, there's quite a bit of, of, of you know, challenge still left in that. And I think the village will ultimately uh, end up going out for RFP. Good. Um, but... We'll see where that goes. We have a spray ground that hasn't been expanded, um, you know, since it was initiated. You know, the spray ground's been there since uh, 2001, or it was initiated in 2001 by Carlo Recca. Yeah, Carlo, I know. So, so Carlo... Put, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So Carlo initiated that. You know, he wrote, he actually wrote the first memo yeah. um, to former Mayor Debbie Chapin yeah. and uh, put that in front of her to initiate the concept and what it was all about. And he did all the background research and everything. He was great at it, I right? Know. And then, sure enough, you know, the village took it and ran with it, and, you know, it's, it's done do great. More, we have to do more projects like that. Exactly. That's what it boils down But to. we need people, more people like Carlo. Exactly. Let Come me forward. take two seconds. Uh, we probably have the three minutes left. We didn't get to talk about flood, the flooding issue. And where are you guys on the flooding issue? Short words. Short, Short words? Yeah. 
I would love to see Mamaroneck never flood again. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, like I said, we need to be proactive and not reactive. Yep. Um, we know we need to work with the Army Corps. Yep. We need to ensure that this projects go through. We need to maintain our rivers and our streams. Perfect. George and I did a river walk. They're disastrous. Really? Yeah. The yeah we were actually, we debris. did a river walk oh. on uh, Sunday, uh, at 7 a.m. actually. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you to me. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. It, and actually, it, it was an eye opener. And, yeah. and, I, and I know quite a bit of what's going on with it, but not enough. I was well educated. I'm all in favor of the ACE project. I think yep. it's going to do wonders. You know, the, the Anita Lane Bridge is finally going to get done next year. Oh, good. As, yeah. Good. Uh, Asterino promised. has promised um, that it will be done in 2018. So they're going to they're going to finally uh, take out the uh, the abutment uh, on the side and the center abutment. They're going to shrink that down. So that'll give you you know more uh, you know more flow of water moving downstream. Um, and but we should make sure whoever the county executive is that they will support getting rid of that bridge. It's not so much getting rid of it, it's, it's more it's so revamp, revamping, you know, you know, yeah. revamping right. it, but, yeah. but at the end of the day, and we certainly need whoever is our county executive, yeah. certainly to support the ACE project, Absolutely. because once that comes down the and pipeline from the feds to the, to the state, to the county, to the right. village, we're committed to it. Absolutely. Uh, Marie and I, if we're in office, we're certainly going to support it 100%. Um, I think the rest of the village will be behind us, and, and I'm sure the rest of the board will. So, you know, I think that... <laughs> Pretty much covers a lot of time. Yeah. We, got about, we got about one more minute. Anything else? Uh, I think we really covered a lot. <laughs> and uh, I think you guys came across to everyone as being two people who really care about the village. We do. We do, um, Phil. But Marie and I have, have, have really had long conversations and, and our walks. And I think that uh, and, at the end... And I I gotta, I a diverse board, a diverse board, I think, is going to be oh, what this village. Be, it has to be diverse board. Yeah. Absolutely. But I also want to say one thing. I congratulate you guys. This has been a very clean campaign. There's been no mudslinging. There's been no. There's, there's no, no reason nobody for taking it. barbs at each other. Congratulate you guys Thank and you. your opponents. This is the way a race should be run. So you guys are really doing a good we're, job. We're, we're really staying. We're job. sticking with the facts. And, good. Exactly. You know what's Perfect. what's we out there. So. Perfect. Phil, I can't thank you enough. I thank I LMC thank TV. LMC TV, and LMC and TV Dean, and, and the crew here. And, Absolutely. Uh, you guys what have I, been wonderful. I'll wrap up by saying, you know, on November 7th is Election Day. George and Maria will be on the ballot. I wish everyone would vote for them. They're on the Republican, Conservative, Independence, and Reform line. They will do a great job for this village. Thank you, Phil. Thank have you, a good Phil. evening. Thank you. Thank you.